who's uh, truly leading and guiding my life. Thank God for my pastor and his wife. Yeah, thank you. All the elders here, members. I thank God for uh, Deacon Bivens. First, I thank God for Jesus. Amen. Uh, Deacon Bivens is a real good friend of mine. And just want to say thank you for what you've done, man, with my daughter. This man got nine kids, maybe ten. What is it, nine or ten? Nine. Nine, okay. But, you know, that, that's, a, that's a lot of work. And then to take on another responsibility that I should have been there, but through my past life, I couldn't be there. I couldn't even help myself. So I had to go get help. And let God help me. Amen, brother. And I thank God for that. But what the Lord has been dealing with me with from the last few days is uh, the youth. See, I got a heart for the youth because I was a youth one time. And no one took time out with me. And my father wasn't there, my mother wasn't there, but when I seen my mother, she was in a coffin, that's the age of 13. But that did not have an effect on me. One thing that I knew had an effect on me was my rebelliousness <laughs> as a young, young age. And I don't know where it come from. I couldn't figure it out where it come from. I was raised in a Christian home. I was raised by Christian women. Lo and behold, what the men were doing, I don't know, but they wasn't there like they should have been there. But I thank God for Jesus, because Jesus was always caring. Amen. Amen. And thank you, Lord. Amen, brother. Touch Lord. My daughter. We raised her from a baby. And somehow, some way, it's just, I don't understand why. But I do understand that Jesus is able to turn any situation around where the enemy is trying to bring her to an open shame. She don't have to live like that. And me and my wife always had her in church. And we told her the ways of the Lord. Amen. And I just thank God for, man, I heard Pastor teaching that day, and I, I got kind of convicted because I felt like I was pushing Jesus on her instead of loving her. And I started thinking about it. I said, no. I was feeding her the word. But the flesh is like to go hide and don't want to come forward. But the Lord would say, go to Ephesians 6. And this is what the Lord was showing me about this situation. And once, once, uh, I know the scripture, and I know the scripture. This is some more gonna go with the scripture. It says, "Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise." Now the Lord sought me down and was explaining this to me. He said these words here. If the kids don't have a parents in the Lord, you got a spiritual parent in the Lord. Amen. But you got to reach out to them. Your spiritual parents in the Lord, if you don't have a mother and father in the Lord, is Pastor Marlo and Mother Marlo, right? right? And that's what the Lord was showing me right there. So, they even go for me. When I first come here, Mother Marlo said, uh, what was it? When the convention of kids 
and sad that I wasn't here. She told me these words here, you wasn't in church. So that let me know. She know everybody in the church just about. The day in the church, she gonna come to me. But that's good. And he said, that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. And say, Father, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. See, what I'm finding out, that kids don't want to be disciplined. Kids don't want to be disciplined, but they want to go do what they want to do. But when they get in trouble, they want to call mom and dad. But mom and dad said, I told you not to go that way. Amen. This is what the word is saying. It says, slaves, be obedient to those who are your master according to the flesh with fear and trembling and the sincerity of your heart uh, as to Christ. So that's telling me that the elders in the church and the mothers in this church, they know the way. They've been there. They've seen it. God has brought them through this. So why not take heed and save yourself some trouble? <laughs> Amen. I'm, man, the kids right. are dying out here. I'm tired of looking at it. I don't have a TV, but I'm hearing things. You know, it's just, man, just take hold what God is saying and trying to teach us. Yes. Because it's serious out here. It's, it's, it's not like 20 years ago when I come here. It's not like that anymore. It don't got so serious where I'm not going back out there no more. Praise the Lord. I mean, I go out there and go to the store or go to Deacon Bibbin House or be with Pastor Rose or something like that, but just to, nah, that's over with. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because I thank God for what he did for me and my disobedience towards him. He disciplined me big time. So I thank God for that. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, we got to learn to do the will of God, not the will of our flesh. Because the flesh will bring forth death. It's going to bring forth sin first, then death. Yeah. That's what the book of Romans say. But one thing I do know, we all in this together. Yes. So let's pray together, stay together as a family. Yes. It's just one body, and that's the body of Christ. Amen. 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 And I thank God for the church. Amen. Because if it wasn't for the church, I don't know where I'd be at. I still be out there doing my thing. I mean, just doing, make my life deeper and deeper in debt with God. You know, God told me one time. I was, uh, I was somewhere. I forgot where. I might have been in Brayton, but the Lord came to me in a vision. He said, "Can it?" When you come to me, don't cry. Come give me a chance to get your life right. That's been like 20 years ago. I thank God for his grace and mercy. Yeah, God, his grace and mercy was activated in my life. Ain't nothing I did. But I, was the same, I was the same thing right here. I mean, I was, whew, I was, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a pretty picture, I just say that. But God had to deal with me. And he dealt with me. He's still dealing with me. Praise the Lord. That's why I'm still here. He's still dealing with me. So I just thank God for the church. I thank God for the love of the church. The love, the love of the church. It's still some good churches out here. Yes, sir. Yes.
But I know one thing, God called me here. Hallelujah. You know, I know God called me. I told Pastor Molo, I said, Pastor, when I first got here, you said that you were my spiritual father and my father. Correct? Yes. Yeah. And I never said nothing about that. I just kept walking, doing my duty here. And the Spirit of the Lord told me two Sundays, last Sunday or Sunday before last, he said, Pastor Marlo is your pastor. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Work on him, brother. 